Hello, hello. Welcome to this edition of the Cancer Coach Talks. I'm your host, Leslie Nance. If you're joining me live here on Facebook, welcome. It's so good to have you. If you're watching this in replay within the Facebook group, awesome sauce. Thank you so much. And if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for this edition of the Cancer Coach Talks. Let me introduce who I am. And my name is Leslie Nance. I'm the founder of Any Stage Cancer Nutrition Protocol, certified holistic nutritionist, certified holistic cancer coach, um, and a certified plant-based chef as well, which feels like it has nothing to do with anything, but it has a lot to do with how I work with my clients. Um, I'm also a six-year cancer survivor. Um, I had uh, cancer in 2012, and I have officially, on uh, February 14th of 2019, officially six years cancer-free, um, and super excited to be here and share with you a little bit of wisdom about why sometimes when you adopt a healthier lifestyle, you end up feeling worse and how, what's happening in the body and how to respect the process. And so that is what we're going to talk about tonight. So welcome everybody. Hi, Allison. It's good to see you. Hi, Jamie. It's good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining in this evening. Always love, love, love being here with you guys. So I do these talks on Tuesdays and Thursday nights. Um, they're in a group called Real Answers About Your Cancer. So if you are, it's on on Facebook. So if you're watching this on YouTube right now, head on over to Facebook uh, if you're a member there and check out Real Answers About Your Cancer. Um, and our admins will give your profile a quick look and then and let you into the group. So, um, so yes. So this, what we're going to talk about tonight does not just apply to cancer nutrition. It applies to, thank you guys so much for the, uh, for the hearts and the, uh, the likes. I appreciate that. Hello, hello. <laughs> Hi, Leanne. <laughs> You're so funny, Eugene. Hi, Leanne and uh, Eugene. It's good to have you here. Hi, Marcy. Thank you so much for joining in this evening. Uh, you guys are fast getting in here tonight. So hello, hello. Um, so, you know, high quality nutrition, quite frankly, might make you feel like poop, <laughs> especially if you're coming from a more conventional sad diet, right? Hi, Lisa. It's good to see you. Especially if you're coming from a more like standard American diet, it can really make you feel lousy. And it gets so frustrating when you've adopted, you've done all this work and you've adopted all these healthy lifestyles. And then you get knocked down with like diarrhea, like some weird sporadic diarrhea, or you get a rash or you get a breakout somewhere, or you get a cold and you're thinking, what the what? <laughs> I am not supposed to be experiencing this because I'm eating really well. And so tonight I want to describe what happens in the body. I get this question a lot. It's, it's a huge concern with, uh, with a lot of my clients that I work with because I'm taking them from, a lot of times I'm taking them from a standard American diet uh, prior to cancer into a healthy whole food plant-based diet and that can cause some reactions in the body and so we're going to talk about that tonight um, and and why that is um, okay so let's just start in here's the dealio when you start eating healthier foods and you stop eating lower grade foods your body, it's going to spur a reaction in your body. And all the things that those lower grade foods has given you, all the, all the toxins that you have gotten, everything that is um, that, that comes with that has to find a pathway out. And so that pathway, once we introduce healthier foods to the diet, that pathway can actually be quite uncomfortable. So what I'd like to know, has anybody ever experienced this? So I'm going to type in, I'm going to type in right now, heck yes. <laughs> Hi, B. it's good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Heck yes, I've experienced this. So I'll just tell you a little story. So... Um, the first year that I was coming off of a more, I wasn't like 
like fast food girl. I was processed food girl. So I, we actually cooked a lot at home, but I used a lot of pre-packaged things, you know? So if I made spaghetti, for instance, um, you know, I would use, I would use cruddy noodles, first of all, um, spaghetti. And then I would just buy the pre-sauce. Like I would just get a sauce that was already made. And then I would just buy the powdery Parmesan cheese, right? <laughs> He's like, heck yes, right? <laughs> so I would buy the powdery Parmesan cheese. Um, and, and, and that's what we'd eat. We wouldn't eat a salad with it. We would eat, you know, crappy French bread with it. And so that's the kind of food that we ate. We ate a lot of process. So like hamburger helper and tuna helper and you know uh uh what is that stuff that you put on chicken what is it called um they used to um shake and bake you know stuff like that so we did eat at home a lot i did cook a lot but we were just eating a lot of processed junky food so don't think that if you're just because you're cooking means that you're eating well because that there are lots of opportunities to eat still really crappy uh, even though you're even though you're cooking at home. So but that's not our subject tonight. So but so I went from having and I hardly ate any vegetables, only like five vegetables when I started my journey. Five. And everything else was very difficult. And Robin will argue with you about that. He's like, five my butt, you wouldn't eat hardly, you'd hardly eat anything, right? Shake and bake, right? <laughs> Did I say it with a Southern accent? Okay, <laughs> guilty. Uh, <laughs> but I would eat five vegetables and I didn't really like any of them fresh. Like they needed to be processed in something. Like if I was gonna eat broccoli, it better be like broccoli and cheese casserole or something like that. I mean, I would not just eat a vegetable, like very, very few vegetables. And so I had to train myself to eat food like real food and it was hard. And so, I started this process and it was, I was really struggling. I was working really hard on trying to get more and more real food in my diet. And I started with smoothies. Uh, I always say smoothie, a smoothie is a gateway drug to a healthier lifestyle. So I started with smoothies cause I could stick a whole bunch of stuff in it. And actually a couple of my first smoothies like made me gag. They were just so gross. And I was like, Egh. I mean, I just could barely get them down. And so I struggled so much and I was working so hard to be different and to make changes. And about six months into my journey, I got incredibly sick, like out of the blue. I got so sick, like on my butt sick. And I was like, how can this possibly be? <laughs> I am eating so well, how could I possibly have gotten a virus or whatever is going on with my body? And I was nauseous and I, I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would wake Robin up and I was like, I feel I'm one of those like sissy pants when it comes to vomiting, like, like that, I am not good with that. And so I would wake him up and I'd be like, I feel like I'm going to vomit. And he's like, well, honey, I don't know what to tell you. My belly would get really distended. And I was just right. <laughs> Like not even five, but you're kicking butt, Jamie. You're doing good stuff every single day. I'm so proud of you. Um, and so, but I, I, I got really, really sick. And this went on for a couple of months. I had this trouble. I was just like, and I was bloated and my face was swollen. And I was, ju I just did not feel well. And I was like, I had been like the first six months, I was like a pooping machine. And then all of a sudden I'm not pooping anymore. And I thought this healthy diet stuff is for the birds. This is not working. And so I went to my naturopath and he's like, okay, so here's what's going on. And I'm going to explain to you what is going on in your body when that happens. Anybody else have that? Anybody else have this problem? Like you started a healthy diet and then you didn't feel well like a week or two or three weeks or four weeks into the process, right? Okay, so let me just explain something. And that is this, your health is cyclical. And what I mean by that is that it is it runs in cycles. So, uh, for women example, we definitely run in cycles, right? And But so do men. It's not just women. Men run in cycles too. You just don't have the outward 
thing that we have as women, which would be our periods. Uh, <laughs> but our whole lives run in cycles. We run with the change of the season. We run with the uh, with the uh, the the rising, which is, has to do with the season. The rising and the lowering of the sap. The way that the pressure changes um, in the in different parts of the country in different parts of the year. Um, sometimes it's humid. Sometimes it's moist. I'm mean, excuse me. Sometimes it's humid. Sometimes it's dry. You know, and so. Um, and then not to mention the seasonal fruits and vegetables and things that we get. I mean, we're all of these things affect our cycle of our lives. And so our health is the same way. It's very cyclical, right? It goes up and down and it's very cyclical. You're not always going to be riding high, even on a healthy diet, right? So let's just get that crystal clear. Even on, let me say that super clear. Even on a healthy diet, you are not going to be riding high all the time. You're going to have downturns in your health. It is just how we are made. And so you might have noticed something like this happening in your, in your health. Right. You start a better diet. I'm going to read my notes because I made really good notes about this. You start a better diet and you you feel really great. Like the first week or month, you're like, yeah, I'm feeling awesome. I feel awesome. And then all of a sudden you wake up one morning and you have diarrhea. And not only do you have diarrhea, like you need to evacuate the house because it's so smelly. And you're like, what is that? And that goes on for a couple of mornings. Like you wake up a couple of mornings and that happens. And you're like, what is, you don't necessarily feel bad, but what is up with this super stinky diarrhea? And so then the next, you know, two or three days later, you're thinking, I feel awesome. Like you, like you have an up level in your health and you're like, I feel really great. And so then you go along with that and then you're feeling really great. You just keep eating your healthy diet. You don't do anything to stop the diarrhea that happened. You just let it happen naturally. You just go on and you, you keep eating that healthy diet and you're just clicking along and feeling great. And then all of a sudden you get a cold and you have, the, you have a fever and you have chills and you feel like, you know, like, man, you know, you lose your appetite. Um, and this goes on for two or three or four days, five days, six days a week. Right. And you just have this like fever and this chills and you're thinking, oh man, this is just, how could this be? I'm eating really healthy. How could I have possibly gotten a cold? Right. And then after the cold leaves, you have another elevation. You're like, wow, I've noticed that my joint pain is much better in my right knee that was hurting. That's really weird, right? So you have like an elevation in your health. And for some of you, it might be, holy cow, I just had scans and my cancer is like, you know, I mean, it's shrinking. It's so much better. And so then you go along on that elevation for a while, you're going, you're singing, everything's good. And then all of a sudden you get this funky rash and it's like broke out on your butt cheek. And you're like, what is that? <laughs> where, where did that come from? And then once that is gone, you have another elevation. And then all of a sudden, like you, maybe you were struggling with acne or something like that or psoriasis or whatever, some eczema, some sort of skin condition. And all of a sudden it's better. And you're like, what is, what's going on? This is the cyclical part of adopting a new healthy lifestyle. And anybody want to take a stab at what's happening? I'm going to give you guys an opportunity. Anybody want to, and by the way, saying all of that, saying all of that, meaning that if you had a cold or you had diarrhea or you had a rash that you did not use anything to stop it you let it progress you let it take its toll uh before you tried to do any type of medical inter inter intervention with it anybody what to eugene <laughs> Lots of sweatpants and laundry. <laughs> Asparagus diarrhea. Is that like stinky? Is that what you mean? <laughs> so Lorraine saying hers was complete opposite. Haven't had a single problem changing to a healthier plant-based diet. Lots of fish, organic meat. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, limiting bread corn also has helped tremendously. I feel like a new person, right? That's amazing. It's amazing but don't be surprised if something creeps up.
it's been three months. So don't be surprised if something creeps up because that's what happens. You, you go along for months and it's like, yeah, this is awesome. I feel like, oh, may zing. And then all of a sudden something hits you and it's really, it really is discouraging. It's like, I don't wish that on you, Lorraine. I'm praying that you have like perfect health throughout this whole process, <laughs> but, but it, it happens. I see it all the time. A lot of times I see people coming to me and they're like, I'm really bloated. Like my, like I'm eating healthier and my stomach feels really, really bloated and I feel really gassy. Um, those are all linked to what we're going to talk about, right? <laughs> had a rash or getting healthier. I know, but it's true. It's true. And there's a reason. There's a reason behind this. Yeah. Don't wish that on your body. It's changing because you're not eating junk food. What's happening actually is that you are eliminating toxins out of the body. And so depending on which organ is working on detoxification. And I don't mean that you're targeting that organ. I mean, that organ decides to let go of some toxins that it's been receiving all of these years. And it decides to let go of some of those toxins. You can experience all kinds of things. And here's the long list of things that you might be experiencing. Headache, fever, chills, you might get a cold. By the way, a fever is not something that you should break. Uh, a fever is something, um, yeah, a fever is something that uh, is something that you should let it take its course in your body um, unless it's super high. Super high would be for an adult would be anything over like 102, actually 104, but to be safe, 102. Um, but you should let it take its course because your body is trying to fight something off and that's its natural defense mechanism. So in my opinion, I, well, Personally, I never break a fever when I have one. And so, but your body is trying to detoxify something out. And so it manifests in all these different things, headache, fever, a cold, uh, chills. You might have a skin breakout. You might even have a rash, um, sluggish bowels or occasional diarrhea, one or the other. Um, you might feel tired or restless or weak even. Um, you might have joint or muscle pain. You might experience the mindset issues of not having any motivation or clarity. Like you can't get like, you're like trying to concentrate on something and you're like, I can't make my brain work. Right? Like it's not, something's not working here. Um, you might experience um, nervousness again in the mindset. You might experience nervousness or irritability. You might have overwhelming, we call them overwhelming icky thoughts in our house. It's from a movie, uh, Clueless. She said, I, and I, I had an, uh, an overwhelming feeling of ickiness. And so you might have an overwhelming feeling of ickiness and that you can't put your finger on. You don't know why it's there. Um, you might have even like more frequent urination. You might notice a change in your urine. You might notice a smell change in your urine or a color change in your urine or frequency of that. Believe it or not, right? <laughs> I got you there. I got you. Uh, believe it or not, this is part of the cure. This is your body cleaning house. This is your body cleaning house and it's an amazing process and you should be grateful when it happens because I know it's hard because you don't feel well, but this is your body saying this stuff does not belong here and it's got a big old broom and it's like sweeping it out, sweeping it out. And maybe it manifests itself in your lymphatic system and you feel really sluggish and tired and weak. And maybe you have some joint pain from that. Or maybe your liver is detoxifying and it manifests itself in a rash on your abdomen. Maybe it is, uh, maybe it is uh, like heavy metals that you're detoxing out of your body and it gives you a really bad headache. All of these manifestations are your body cleansing itself. A fever. I have a lot of people about their third or fourth weekend, they will spike a fever and they're like, what? I think I have the flu or something. I'm like, do you have a cough? No. Do you have any other symptoms of the flu? Nope. It's your body detoxing. It's your body detoxing and, and, and that's what it's supposed to do. 
It's supposed to do these things, random diarrhea, random constipation. It is your body trying to get rid of something. Every single one of you is designed to heal. Listen to me. Listen to me. Every single one of you, your body is designed to heal. I want you to think about your simple healing mechanisms that you have, the ones that manifest, that you can see happen on the spot. If you cut yourself, what happens, right? If you cut yourself, if you break the skin, you're probably going to bleed, right? And then within a few minutes, you're going you're gonna to start clotting. You're going to start having blood clotting happening in that area. And it's your body sending special red blood cells to the area going, hey, we have a problem. And then it sends white blood cells because it's like, oh, let's make sure that no bacteria got in there. We don't want any bacteria getting in there. And then what happens? You form a scab. And then in about a week, the scab falls off and bingo, your skin is totally closed up from the puncture. You are designed to heal and that does not stop with our skin it is all over you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet your immune system is constantly scanning is constantly looking for malfunctions cancer is a malfunction in your body your body is constantly looking for that and when we adopt a healthier lifestyle, when we change our, our, our relationship with how we treat our bodies, then we make that scanning system way more powerful. It's like having, remember you used to have to have, I have a Mac, so I don't have it anymore, but in my PC, I used to have virus scanning software, right? scanned my computer all the time to make sure that there were no viruses. And every once in a while I would get a notification and it would pop up and say, Hey, you have a virus, blah, blah, blah. Would you like us to fix it? Yes, please. Please fix that. Right? Your body is the same way. And it manifests that notification in a fever or in diarrhea or in, in, in rashes or headaches or bloating or whatever it is. It's manifesting that we have a problem and I need to fix it. Would you like me to fix it? Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Everybody with me so far? Your body is designed to heal. Here's something about our Western society that I think is, um, it's not unique to us, but uh, a little bit. It's a little bit unique to us. I mean, I, I've traveled the world. I've experienced a lot of different cultures. Um, and um, we are super fast to anytime we are in discomfort of any kind. I'm not just talking about like being sick. I'm talking about it's cold in here. It's hot in here. It's this. It's, you know, this seat's not comfortable. This is, you know, we are very spoiled to wanting to fix that immediately. <laughs> Modern humans do not, in the Western culture specifically, I'm not just talking about America. I'm just talking about Western civilization. We are very prompt to fix things that make us feel uncomfortable. And this gives double, double, double Dutch double for sickness. If we get a cold, we, we go right to Walgreens and walk down the cold aisle and look at bottles that show our symptoms. And okay, this is going to help me. This is what I'm going to take because I don't want this cold anymore. We take flu vaccines so that we won't get the flu because it's inconvenient. We take you know, we, we, we do all of this crazy like stuff to try to prevent ourselves from being uncomfortable. But sometimes when your body is uncomfortable, it is going through a process. And if you stop that process, if you stop diarrhea, then you are stopping the process of toxins leaving your body. And I talk to people that are going through key active chemotherapy about this a lot, that one of the chronic complaints is that I have diarrhea and I'm like, okay, so either that or constipation. And there's, trust me, one is not better than the other. <laughs> They're both miserable. Um, but 
but when you have chronic diarrhea and you're going through chemotherapy, I like for people to reframe the thought of that that's your body eliminating the toxins of the chemotherapy that it doesn't need right? I don't need that part. I don't need to use that, that I don't need to have that. And so it's your body eliminating that. Now I know it does disrupt your gastric system as well. So it's not exactly cut and dry like that, but it's a great visualization to think about that. And you are removing toxins out of the body, whether you have diarrhea or solid poops or uh, otherwise. So, so it's really important that we embrace help ourselves not get dehydrated when we have diarrhea, make sure that our fevers do not get too high that cause other damage in the body, maintaining that, but not being so quick to like solve the problem, right? We get a headache, we go get an ibuprofen. We get a headache, we're like, oh, I need an aspirin. I mean, and, and this is because we are not good with being uncomfortable, but truly this is your body saying I have a toxin, or I have a problem and I'd like to get rid of it. Because you're as soon as an irritant is introduced to the body, it will do everything to get it out. That's including junk food, that's including medicine, that's including the air, that's including a cold or flu virus. Your body is designed to heal. And if you get an irritant in the body, it will do everything that it can to remove that irritant. I actually call this emergency mode as it applies to junk food, as it applies to like fast food and uh, a standard American diet. So, all right, guys, that is all I, oh, no, I don't, that's not all I have. I, I want... I want you to, if you're experiencing any of these things, and I see a lot of you are saying that you're not, um, I know that there are a lot of people that do experience these things. If you're experiencing any of this, I want you to be super patient with yourself. When you don't feel well, rest. The more you rest, the better you will feel, the less the symptoms will be. So don't, don't try to be tough and like push through, right? I want you to be conscious of taking care of your body. Make sure that you're staying hydrated. Make sure that you are, um, that, that you're not letting things get out of control, but also respecting the processes of the detoxification that is help that is happening in the body. Um, the other thing is, uh, that I'm going to tie into that is that last week somebody asked about, and I can't remember who it was. I'm sorry to say someone asked about, uh, sleep and is sleep important for my cancer journey. And I am going to answer that question on Thursday night. So please make a point, mark your calendar, uh, make sure the notifications for this group are turned on so that you can, um, so that you can, you can see that, um, the chat that I'm going to have about sleep. I have some definite opinions about sleep and some, uh, and some things that I can give you to help you achieve better sleep. We're going to talk about like blue light. We're going to talk about, um, disruptions during sleep. We're going to talk about all kinds of things. And I'll tell you about my own personal sleep habits and, um, and my rituals that I go through <laughs> before bed. And we're going to discuss all of that. So make sure you join me on Thursday night at 6 PM mountain time. And we'll discuss all of that. So I just have a quick minute, um, before I leave, I've got it like two minutes. Does anybody want to, uh, does anybody have any questions about anything that we've discussed here or otherwise? Um, if this is something that you, um, if you, if you're listening to this, whether you're live here or in replay or on YouTube, and I'll wait for some questions over here. Um, if, if you are listening in any of those venues and you're like, okay, you know, I need to, I, I, that's great. I don't even get to experience this because I've not even adopted a healthy lifestyle yet. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that means for my cancer or my journey. Then please feel free to reach out with me. There is a link um, there. I'll put a link here in the group and then there'll be a link on YouTube as well. So you guys here in the group should know that um, by Jamie. Uh, you guys should know here that we do have a, uh, a YouTube channel where you could share out some of these videos. If you know someone that is struggling with cancer and can use this information, you think, wow, so-and-so needs to hear this, then uh, we do put these videos out on, uh, on YouTube. So yeah, so go check that out. Does anybody have any questions for me tonight? You guys, oh, Penny does. <laughs> Penny Lane has questions. <laughs> All 
Are we good? Uh, Lorraine is saying, yes, I need help. <laughs> I will, uh, I'll put a link here. I'll just type it in right now, Lorraine, so you can have that. Um, you can just book a call. It's completely free uh, to book a call. Uh, and we can talk about what exactly you need help with. Um, uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't know what she's barking at. <laughs> she's got a big bark, though, doesn't she? Hey, Penny Lane. Penny, come here. Penny Lane, come here. Oh, my goodness. Penny. Come here. Come here. <laughs> there, there is something at the back door she is not good with. So, yeah. So, Lorraine, you can just go, sorry, you can go right to that <laughs> that website, uh, that link right there, and you can, uh, you can uh, book a free call with me there. So, all right, guys, I guess that is all we have tonight. <laughs> no, I love it. <laughs> She's so loud. You guys have a great, a great evening. <laughs> Hold on. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where Robin has gone. Okay. So there we go. Uh, you guys have a great evening. <laughs> I will be back on Thursday night. So thank you guys. You're welcome. Have a good night, everybody. Uh, <laughs> yes. There's something at the back door she's not happy about. So I'm going to have to go investigate uh, before she does. <laughs> so <laughs> I will see you guys on Thursday night. We're going to be talking about sleep. Everybody have a good night. Have a good night's sleep. Bye. <laughs>